Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. Today we are in Dev Test 1.867, otherwise known as the Engine Overhaul, and we're going to have a look at these amazing looking new engines. There's a whole bunch of stuff to cover, so I'll get started very shortly, but just look at these guys, they're so cool. The new exhausts look class, and the these big radiators on the top really look the part. So, without further ado, let's get on to building the engine. First of all, you'll want an engine block. Now, these are the same as the old ones, but it has a new menu, opened with Q, that gives you a bunch of extra scary options. Now, I'll have a better look at these options later in the video. This is your engine controller, essentially, and it is where you'll be connecting your crankshafts. Hovering over this block will provide an overview of the engine's performance and configuration as a whole. Crankshafts, again, same as the old ones, place these in a line leading off your engine block and you can attach some of the other engine components to these. There's nothing much more to it than that. Next is the adapter. This is kind of like a one block extension for the crankshaft and lets you place blocks and cylinders away from the main crankshaft. Uh, you can do some pretty interesting configurations like with this. Next up, we have the cylinder, and this is the main power source for your engine, and what most of the other parts will be connecting to. You must connect these to the crankshaft, or an adapter, with the bottom of the cylinder touching the connected block. You can hover over the individual cylinders to get specific information relating to its configuration and performance. Next up we have the fuel injector. These parts connect directly to any side of a cylinder and nothing else. They have two connecting faces, as indicated by these little green markers shown on the sides of the injector, and each fuel injector adds a lot of power to your cylinders. Next up we have the carburetor. Now these connect only to a cylinder, much like the old ones, and add some power to the engine, and it's a way to get fuel into the engine in the first instance instead of the fuel injector. You are also able to connect superchargers to these to help improve your engine's efficiency and they are required to make turbochargers work. You can connect these carburetors to multiple cylinders and it will provide the full bonus to each cylinder it is attached to. The supercharger can only connect to a carburetor and is used to increase fuel efficiency at high engine RPM, i.e. when the power draw is high. These can be shared between multiple carburetors and will pass their benefits on to the cylinders that the carburetors are attached to. Turbochargers only connect to cylinders and act as an exhaust to help cool the cylinder down. It will also provide a fuel efficiency boost when it's at low RPM as long as there is a carburetor attached to the cylinder. You can connect exhaust parts to the turbocharger to route your exhaust gases away from the engine but the exhaust system is one way, so you can only attach an output to the black side of the turbocharger. There are now a new variety of exhaust parts. Exhausts attach directly to a cylinder and provide cooling. This allows the engine to run at higher RPM without shutting down. Now I'll cover uh, fuel efficiency and heat generation later in the video. The exhausts, as I mentioned, are a one-way system and can be a little difficult to get connected in the way that you would want. Currently they are purely for aesthetics, but I do recommend at least outputting your exhaust gases to an empty block, as this may change in the future. Whenever building your exhausts, you can see the output face in the build menu, indicated by the brown band around the pipe. You can see this in the build mode model as well, shown by a little extruding lip on the output end, and you can also use the little green indicators in build mode. The trumpet type end shows the input to the pipe, and the bullet tip shows the output. Next up we have radiators. There are two types of radiator block, a small one block radiator and a large 3x3 radiator. These can attach either to a cylinder or to the crankshaft and provide a cooling bonus to the whole engine at a cost of slightly higher fuel consumption. You can see your total radiator area and how much extra fuel it's consuming by mousing over the engine block. Next up we have electrical engines. The electrical engines allow you to store power in batteries for later use. All of the new fuel engine parts have built in electrical charger thingies to allow them to interface with electrical engines so you do just need to attach this block to a bunch of the associated battery blocks. The electrical engines are capable of outputting this energy again at an efficiency cost shown in the Q menu of the engine. 
You can change the power output to get a better efficiency at the cost of lower output speed. The energy stored in a battery is a different resource to engine power. Total energy convertible shows how much battery energy storage is converted to power each tick. Total power creatable shows how much power each tick of energy is worth. A battery's output will change based on the total stored charge. The more charge you have in the battery, the more it will be able to draw and turn into power every tick. The most important thing about the new batteries is that you can transfer this resource between ships, allowing for fully battery powered vessels. This allows for some really cool engineless drones and makes carriers a real asset to the fleet. You can switch this resource up much like you do with other resources using the new localized resources system. Now that we've had a look at the new parts, there are a few mechanics and options you need to be aware of too. First up, let's have a look at engine configuration. Pressing Q on the engine block brings up the engine menu and you can change various settings. Ramp up time is how long it takes for your engine to respond to a new demand. If you set this very, very fast, it will hurt your efficiency during ramp up and slowing it down improves efficiency during the ramp up time, but takes significantly longer to get to the new demand. Decay is the reverse of ramp up time. It's how fast the energy responds to a drop in demand. There's no indication of whether this affects anything else at the minute. Responsiveness is how fast the engine will begin its ramp up after the demand has been increased. This allows you to set multiple different engines to reach their peak at different engine demands and prioritize a custom engine for a specific task. For example, it should be possible to use a very efficient general purpose engine as a with a fast responsiveness but also have a backup fuel guzzler with a huge power output and a low responsiveness to cover any high peaks in demand without it chewing up all of your fuel in the meantime. Next, battery charge. This is how much of the engine's power is dedicated to charging batteries, simple as that. Maximum drive is the highest percentage of total power the engine is allowed to output. This is a way of limiting an engine and can be useful if it's running into cooling problems or if you want to maintain a high fuel efficiency by forcing a low RPM. The information below the sliders here shows your engine output and efficiency at various RPM values. The faster your engine is running, the less efficient it will be. Also, a high mass, i.e. a bigger engine, will cost more power to ramp up to a change in demand. The fuel usage plots on the left show the fuel use at different RPM values for each cylinder and this darker line is for an engine as a whole. You can normalize the graph to give a slightly different view by clicking on this little checkbox in the top left. In the bottom left there's a handy little heat uh, cylinder chart that shows you just exactly how much heat each cylinder is uh, generating. And finally, the demand and response plots at the bottom here show what your engine is trying to do, showing shock horror, the demand and the response. And that is the engine configuration. It's quite a busy screen, but there's loads of useful information and the sliders are pretty easy to work out. They're all very well tooltipped as well. Next, an important mechanic I mentioned earlier is heat. Now, when a cylinder heats up, it takes a hit to its maximum power output. So let's just take a couple of these coolers off and let's see this start to rise up. Now you see the temperature starting to rise. It's at 33, 34. Temperature turns off at 95% and you can see our maximum power output is dropping rapidly. Whenever it gets too hot and overheats completely, it shuts down and it won't turn on again until it has cooled down sufficiently. Now you can use these engine exhausts to reduce heat buildup and they help to act as a cooler and route gases away from the engine. Uh, you can also use turbochargers, uh, they act as a, uh, a slight uh, cooling benefit as well. You can also limit the maximum drive to prevent the engine from running at full power. Now, this will let it run cooler but it will also limit your uh, engine to 50% of its well in this case 50% of its total maximum power output. So it will run more efficient, but it will have less power overall. There is pretty much no benefit running your engines hot, so it seems like it's always worthwhile to add sufficient cooling to keep your engines running efficiently. And it seems to be the gating point for, for really, really big engines. 
Now, with all this talk about efficiency, I should probably mention just how much more fuel these big engines will draw. Now, there's two huge refineries on this platform. Well, I say huge, they're pretty big. Um, but they can just about keep up with uh, the fuel demand of these engines just for this platform, and all this is running is all the shields. So, you can see in the bottom right there just how much fuel it's chewing through. Building fuel efficient engines is much more of a challenge now, but a lot more rewarding in comparison to the old system where fuel was more or less a moot point. We're all going to have to learn how to be a little bit more conservative with our power and more creative in our engine designs. Now I haven't covered any particular designs as the intricacies are all still changing and while these engines look the part I'm, I have no idea just how good they are in comparison to anything else. So. Uh, I encourage you guys to play around with it and let me know if you discover anything, because I would really appreciate some heads up on this as well, if you discover any interesting tips and tricks. Now, I doubt the parts shown here will change in any significant function throughout the course of development, but I will cover any further sort of details as they crop up, and uh, I will do a more in-depth one covering probably specific engine builds in the future. I really hope you enjoyed the video and this has given you a little bit of an insight into how the new engines work. Any likes, subs or comments are really really awesome, I love hearing from you guys and I read every single comment. As always, take it handy and have a bloody good day. <laughs>